It was. Yeah. I'm not mad at it, though. Uh -uh. Hi, Beulah. <laughs> Hello, Beulah. Hi, Beulah. Oh, hi, Valeria. <laughs> and this is Dolores speaking to you. Dolores, how are you? I'm fine. Good, I am too. Good, good. I get my picture here. You see the little camera icon? It's probably got a line through it, Sister Carter. It just went off. Hi, Val. Hey, Celeria. Well, that's Val. Yeah. Good evening, Sister, Sister Cooper and Sister Velmina. Oh, good evening. Yes. Y'all yeah, got y'all purple on today. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even notice yes, that. Do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, royalty. Just All right, we're going <laughs> we to see if a few more people come in and we'll get started. Got people on Facebook waiting for us as well. What did Dolores do? She she got off to come I back on. She got disconnected. She's going to come back in, I'm oh. assuming. All right, y'all. So glad to see you all made it to another uh, Sunday evening uh, church school session for Turner Memorial Amy Church. So we welcome all those who are watching us through Zoom. Uh, we welcome those who are on Facebook. Any visitors, we say hello and thank you for tuning in. And so the last following weeks, so so two weeks ago, we talked about, I lost my train. We talked about seeing a new thing. And then we followed that week up with talking about we want to see a new thing that is going to call for us to have some spiritual maturity. And so for this week, once we figure out we want to find have a new thing or see a new thing, we start working on our spiritual maturity, we need to understand what it means for us to walk as believers. And so that's what that's going to be our focus on tonight, a spiritual Christian's walk. And so we're going to hit a few slides and hopefully be in and out of here. I always say finish early and I never do. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and look to, we're going to go ahead and look to the Lord and go in the, in the word of prayer. Our Lord, we thank you once again for this day. We thank you for another opportunity to gather together on these electronic and digital platforms that we may share in your word and the study of your word. And Lord, we pray for those who may be homeless and outdoors at this moment on the East Coast and the DMV area as we face brutal cold and snow. We pray that you would help them find a place of shelter and warmth. And God, we pray, Holy Spirit, that you would uh, be in the midst of this session, that you would be once again the teacher on tonight. Use me for your glory, that you may be glorified and your people may be edified. Have your way in the session. It's in Jesus' name that we pray and we say amen. 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 And so we're going to get started in a second. Let me send these people to their place. Okay, broadcast a message, broadcast. All right, there we go. And so let me share my screen and we can get started, good people. All right, here we go. A spiritual Christian's walk. And so tonight we want to talk about, as I've already said, a spiritual Christian's walk. And so we're going to talk, I want to lift up three fundamental things that I believe the Holy Spirit will have me share with you all tonight. And the three fundamental things I want to lift, lift up is that the Christian walk or the spiritual Christian's walk exists of trust. So it walks, the spiritual Christian walks in a, in a, in a, in a mode of trust. They walk based on truth. And their walk is about action and not talk. So if we're going to walk as spiritual Christians, we need to trust. We need to base our walk upon the truth. And our walk needs to be more than talk. It needs to be some action. And so we want to start here 
their walk is based on truth. <clears throat> and so let's start opening up. You know, I use a lot of scriptures, so we're going to go through a couple different uh, pericopes tonight. And so we want to start off at Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And if our sister Cosette Jackson was on, I don't know, she may be on. You know, we all know that this is hers and Jarrell Pridgens. This is their favorite verses. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And we're all familiar with this. The proverb writer says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. And so what's interesting about this particular text, the proverb writer is talking about a trust in God, that we trust in God wholeheartedly. Trust in the Lord literally means to trust Jehovah. And what I found interesting in that statement is that I, I, I looked up the word Jehovah in, in the Bible dictionary, and it, and it told me that Jehovah was the personal name of God for the Israelites, that that was their personal name. And, and what it meant to them was, is he who is or he who will be. And so because he was personal to them, they, they understood that they had to put all their trust in the Lord and that they would trust him to direct their path, to direct their walk. And so, and so here is the Israelites understanding the Jehovah God, understanding that in order to walk with God, to be spiritually walking with God, that they literally had to put their trust in the Lord. And they had to believe that he would direct everything that he done. And so, and so if we're going to walk with the Lord and we're going to walk as spiritual Christians, we have to have a factor of trust that God will lead us to where he wants us to be. There is a level of trust we need to have if we're going to follow what God wants to lead us. So there's a level of trust that we need to have if we're going to go where God will lead us. Psalms 37. Psalms 37. Uh, verses 1 through 5. Let me get there. I'm on the wrong book. Psalms 37, verses 1 through 5. Once again, we're using the New Living Translation for our study. Here it is. Don't worry about the wicked or envy those who do wrong. For like grass, they soon fade away. Like the spring flowers, they soon wither. Trust in the Lord and do good. Then you will live safely in the land and prosper. Take the light in the Lord, and he will give you your heart's desires. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him, and he will help you. And so when we... Uh, put ourselves in a position of trusting God and walking where God leads us, we have to realize that in that position of trust and showing God that we trust him, he will then hear our desires and give us the desires of our hearts. That's what the psalmist says right there. He says, take the light in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him. And so we need to trust God at the level of commitment that we can give everything to God. And I know sometimes it's hard to give everything because some of us have control issues. If we're not controlling it, we don't trust it. And, and, and that's the thing about following and walking with God as a spiritual Christian. There are going to be some times that God calls you to a level of trust 
as we as the as the old Baptist preacher, that the old preacher would say, you gotta trust, you gotta trust her when you can't trace it. And so God will sometimes pull us in a position of trust that we have to trust him even though we don't see him. We, we don't see God, we don't feel God, we're not hearing from God, but we have to trust that God is leading us to the place where he would want us to go. We often get caught up in the formula about, how, about the how of God, that we forget that God just can. We get caught up in how God's going to do this or do that, and we forget that God just can. He can just do it. That's what they said when they said, trust Jehovah, God who is, and God he who, he who will be. And so, and so God can do whatever he's leading us or trusting or wanting us to trust him to do. And so we got to believe that God will, will lead us uh, to the place where he would have us to be and that God can do what he, what he wants to do in, 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 the, in our midst as we trust him. God shows us the path to walk. That's what the proverb writer said. He says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding and he will direct your path. And so this thing keep jumping on me. Jeremiah 10 and 23, Jeremiah verse chapter 10, verse 23. Here it is. I know, Lord, that our lives are not our own. We are not able to plan our own course. So Jeremiah says, look, I know that, that, that my life doesn't necessarily belong to me and that I cannot plan the course that you have for me. And because I can't plan my course, that's why I need to trust in the Lord that he may then direct my path, that he may then show me where I need to walk and where I need to go and where I need to be. And so the first thing that we're gonna have to focus in if we're gonna do this thing called a spiritual Christian's walk is that we have to build a level of trust, a level of faith in God that no matter what it looks like, we understand that God has us, that God has us. And so, so the next thing that I wanted to just share and we shouldn't be too long tonight, is that their walk is based on truth. That their walk is based on truth. As believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, truth should be the foundational principle that we move in. Truth should be the foundational principle that we move in. For a lot of you, you probably don't know this about me, but I'm a real political junkie. I listen to political talk radio pretty much all day, five days a week. Uh, I'm a serious XM 126. Uh, keep it locked there from Joe Madison to, to Laree Daniels Favors to Karen Hunter to, to Clay Kane. Uh, Heather. So, and so I, I engage in this political process. And also um, there's this, uh, this, this uh, social media account that I follow on Twitter, Twitter called Right Wing Watch, Right Wing Watch. And what they do, they, they kind of follow a lot of these uh, right wing, far right, as you want to call them and label them. I'm not so big into the labels, but these people have these uh, somewhat opposing positions. And a lot of the stuff that they post have to do with religious leaders. And over the last several months, they've been posting a lot about these religious leaders who call themselves prophets and prophetess, who have prophesied that the man who is no longer president would be reelected to a second term. And, you know, and they're still holding on to these prophetic voices that they claim that they heard from God. And so, and so those of us who read the book and understand and know the book, we understand that it's only prophetic and true if the prophecy is fulfilled. But yet here they are supposed to be walking spiritual giants 
who they say hear the voice of God speak to them prophetic truths, but yet their truths that they claim are prophetic have not come to pass. So that makes them a false prophet, but yet they won't back down off a lie. And so, and so part of our understanding of who we are and what we do as we walk as spiritual Christians, we have to be rooted in truth. We have to be rooted in truth. Uh, John chapter one, verse 14. And those of us that read our word, we know this. John chapter one, verse 14. Here's what John says. John says, so the word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the father's one and only son. So God was made human among us. We saw his love and his faithfulness. And we've seen the glory of the father's one and only son. And so John is, is testifying to the fact that the Jesus that we follow has now become human. He is now made flesh. And Jesus is our standard bearer of truth. Jesus is our leveling line for truth. And so, and so don't miss this. We're going to go somewhere with this. God is our standard bearer of truth. Come on, John, go, go with me to John uh, chapter 14. We're going to stay in the book of John right quick. John 14, 15 and 17. 15 through 17, here it is. He says, if you love me, obey my commandments, obey my truth. And I will ask the father and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and it doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. And so John says, look, the commandments are the truth. If, if you love God, if you want to walk like a Christian, First, obey my commandments. This, this is what Jesus is telling us in his text. Then he says, and I will ask the Father to give you some help, give you the Holy Spirit. He will never leave you. But here it is. He is the Holy Spirit who leads you into all truths. Then, 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 then this, here it is right here. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him. It does not recognize him. And that's where we are in our culture. We're in a place that people aren't looking for truth. That, that's why the world can't receive him and the world doesn't recognize him because he, he told us previously before he made that statement is that he would give us the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will, leave us, will lead us into all truths and that the Holy Spirit will reside in us. And so then the world sees us and they can't recognize the truth in us. And so that's why they cannot understand and receive Jesus. And so, and so basically what John is telling us is that truth is the essential thing that we need in our Christian walk. We need to be rooted and grounded in truth. The truth is fact and should always be recognizable for the believer. Truth is fact, and it should always be recognizable by the believer. Look, when we start chasing after things that are not true, we then need to begin to examine ourselves. We need to begin to examine our spiritual fortitude, our spiritual study, our spiritual time of prayer, our spiritual time of connecting with the word of God and connecting with the Holy Spirit, that we may be able to identify the truth. Because if we empowered by the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit lives within us, then the word of God says that we are know the truth. 
because we have been led into all truth. And so, and so the truth should never be an unrecognizable thing for us. And as I, I, as I kind of reconnect back to my opening statement about the political thing, and so, and so one of their big things is, or two of their big things is three, I'm gonna name the three, is the gay marriage piece. So gay marriage, homosexuality, abortion, and, and I'm missing the other thing, and same-sex marriage. And, 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 so, and, so, and so they will allow those things, those tenets that they, they feel so passionate about to hold on to those things that they will dismiss the truth or that they will hold on to a lie, that they will hold on to a prophetic word that has not come to pass yet, but won't back down and say that, no, I missed it. That, that, that I must have heard some familiar spirit that wasn't the spirit of God because, because they're so ingrained and attached to those, those uh, issues and those perspectives that they no longer can allow themselves to recognize the truth. And the truth is the person that they will support is no longer the president. That's the truth. I, I don't care how many prophetic words they get how, the, how much they declare that, that, that in the heavens God says that, that Biden is not the president and all this stuff. And yet they are supposed to be Christians. They are supposed to be prophets and prophetess that's, that claim the name of God, but yet they cannot recognize truth or don't want to acquiesce to the truth. And so, so we have to walk in the spirit of truth. John 17. Verse 16 through 19. Here it is. They do not belong to this world anymore than I do. Make them holy by your truth. So here's Jesus talking again. Jesus says, make them holy by your truth. He's talking about us believers. Teach them your word your word, which is truth. So the word of God is true and the word of God makes us holy. Just as you sent me into the world, I'm sending them into the world. And I give myself, I'm sorry, I didn't start at six. I started at 13. Let me back up. I'm getting too excited. Let me, here we go. John 17, verse six. I'm sorry, here we go. I have revealed I have revealed, I have revealed you to the ones you gave me from this world. They were always yours. You gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything I have is a gift from you. For I have passed on to them the message you gave me. They accepted it and know that I came from you and they believe you sent me. Don't, don't miss this. We're going to tie this into this, to this last point that's on the slide here. They accepted it and know that I came from you and they believe you sent me. Verse 9. My prayer is not for the world, but for those you have given me because they belong to you. All who are mine belong to you and you have given them to me. So they bring me glory. So this is Jesus talking to the Father God. Now I am departing from the world. They are staying in this world, but I'm coming to you. Holy Father, you have given me your name. Now protect them by the power of your name so that they will be united just as we are united. During my time here, I protected them by the power of, of the name you gave me. I guarded them so that no one was lost except the one headed for destruction as the scriptures foretold. Verse 13. Now I'm coming to you. I told them many things while I was with them in this world so that they would be filled with my joy. I have given them your word and your word and, and the world hates them because they do not belong to the world just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but to keep them safe from the evil one. 
They do not belong to this world any more than I do. Make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is truth. Just as you sent me into the world, I'm sending them into the world. And I give myself as a holy sacrifice for them so they can be made holy by your truth. Walking in truth helps us avoid deception and makes us right with God. Walking in truth helps us to avoid deception and makes us right with God. I know I'm right about it because it's right here in this passage I read because because Jesus says, look, I taught them about, about you and about me, and they believe me. And because they believe me, I'm asking you to keep them. And I told them your truth. And because they received your truth, they have been sanctified by your truth and by your word. And so, and so when we walk in the truth of God, it helps us to avoid being deceived. It says even, it talks about even the very elect of God can be deceived by familiar spirits, that, that Satan can transform himself into a, to an angel of light, that, that Satan can present himself as holy, that Satan can present himself a, as being a, 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 a one of us and a part of, of God's kingdom and a part of God's collective, but but really he's a sheep and wolf, he, he's, he's a wolf in sheep's clothing. And so we got to make sure that we understand the truth of God so we can't be deceived by those who, who, rep who say they represent God, but they are not really God. We need to know the true by the, the, the tree by the fruit that it bears. Just a couple more. And so, and so Exodus. Exodus uh, chapter 20, verse 16. You must not testify falsely against your neighbor. Here it is. Our truth must be foundational enough that we can apply to others and not just ourselves. That's what the writer in Exodus is telling us. Look, if you're going to operate in truth, just don't use it for you, but use it for your neighbor as well. Don't, don't, don't say untruths about your neighbor. That even when dealing with your neighbor, you should be dealing with your neighbor in truth. Because it's funny how we can deal with ourselves in truth, but we'll lie on other people. We won't lie, and, and sometimes we'll lie on ourselves or we'll tell a lie, but 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 in our mind, we can we can we can shape our mind to believe that what we're saying in, in a lie is true. And and so and so we must be foundational enough that we can apply truth to others as well as ourselves. So back to John, John chapter 8. John chapter 8, verses 31 and 32. John chapter 8, verses 31 and 2. Jesus said to the people who believed in him, you are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Don't miss this, people of God. The truth of God allows us to walk and live a life of freedom. The truth of God allows us to walk and live in a life of freedom. Life without restrictions and chains. The truth of God helps us to live a life without restrictions and chains. That, that's what he said. He said, if you believe in me, he says, you are truly my disciples. If you remain faithful, if you remain uh, constant, if you remain obedient to my teachings, 
Then he says, because you have been obedient and you have remained faithful to my teachings, you will know the truth. And because you know the truth, you will no longer be bound because the truth will make you free. And I don't know about y'all on the live on tonight, but I know there were some truths that I had to learn about myself in order to free myself up. Hallelujah. There were some truths that I had to embrace that I did not want to embrace in order for me to live a life without change. Amen. And I know that somebody who's watching, who's listening like there were some things that had you bound, but until you begin to follow the word of God, until you begin to give in to the spirit of God and understand the truths of God, you could not get yourself free. Amen. You could not get yourself free. And so, and so the word of God frees us. It liberates us. It breaks the chains off of our lives. Amen. And somebody should shout amen right there. The word of God frees us. Not only does that, but, but, but truth helps us to walk in accountability. Truth helps us to walk in accountability. First John, first John chapter one. First one, first John chapter one, verses eight and ten. Verses eight through ten. Here it is. First John chapter one, verse eight. If we claim we have no sin, we are only fooling ourselves and not living in truth. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all wickedness. If we claim we have not sinned, we are calling God a liar and showing that his word has no place in our hearts. And so, and so John is saying, look, he already told us that if we have the word of God in us, that his word is truth. And then he says, because if we claim we have no sin, we are only fooling ourselves and not living the truth. Truth holds us and makes us accountable. If, if, if we didn't have truth, there would be no need to call ourselves out for sin. Truth understands that we are no more than filthy rags before God. Truth understands that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And so, but, but truth also understands when it relates to our Christian walk, that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of all of our unrighteousness. And, and I like how he says that, and if we claim we have not sinned, we are calling God a liar and showing that his word, that his truth, his word has no place in our hearts. And so truth holds us and makes us walk in accountability. Truth holds us and makes us walk in accountability. And so here it is, the last slide, and we get ready to get out of here. So, so, so not only um, do we need to walk in trust, not only do we need to walk in truth, but our walk should result in action and not just talk. We know a lot of folks who are good at flapping their gums, as we like to say. We know a lot of people that talk, 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 but they don't produce many uh, receipts for action. They, 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 they don't get a lot accomplished, but they talk, talk, talk. They talk big, they talk bad, but they really don't get anything accomplished. And if we're gonna walk as spiritual Christians, we need to have some action in our lives. First Corinthians chapter four, first Corinthians chapter four, 
verses 14 through 20. First Corinthians chapter four, verses 14 through 20. This is Paul talking to the Corinthian church. Here it is. Paul says, I'm not writing the thing I'm not writing these things to shame you, but to warn you as my beloved children. For even if you had 10,000 others to teach you about Christ, you have only one spiritual father. For I became your father in Christ Jesus when I preached the good news to you. So I urge you to imitate me. That's why, I have, that's why I have sent Timothy, my beloved and faithful child in the Lord. He will remind you of how I follow Christ Jesus, just as I teach in all the churches wherever I go. Here it is. Some of you have become arrogant, thinking I will not visit you again, but I will come and soon if the Lord lets me. And then I will find out whether these arrogant people just give pretentious speeches or whether they really have God's power. For the kingdom of God is not just, just, not just a lot of talk. It is living by God's power. Which do you choose? Should I come with you? Should I come with a rod to punish you? Or should I come with love and a gentle spirit? Look, listen to what Paul says. Paul says, some of you in the kingdom, some of you in the body, you have become full of yourself. You have become arrogant. And you got all these lofty words and all these lofty things that you talk about. But I come to let you know that the kingdom of God is not about talk. But it's about God's power at work. He, he, he says, let, let me read. He says, find out whether these arrogant people just give pretentious speeches, pretentious speeches, or whether they really have God's power. For the kingdom of God is not just a lot of talk. It is living by God's power. We must move beyond performative soliloquies that amount to no more than empty words. But we must walk in the actionable power of God. We got to move beyond performative words and we got to literally walk in the actionable, the demonstrative power of God. That's what God requires from us as spiritual Christians, as we walk in this spiritual thing called faith, that we have actionable power. Hallelujah. Because he has given us the power of all powers. He has given us the Holy Spirit that resides in us. He has given us his Deutimus power, his exousia power, the power of God, that we may move in action. Here it is, James, James chapter 2. James chapter 2, verses 14 through 17. What good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but don't show it by your actions. Can that kind of faith save anyone? Suppose you see a brother or a sister who has no food or clothing, and you say goodbye and have a good day. Stay warm and eat well. But then you don't give that person any food or clothing. What good does that do? So you see, faith by itself isn't enough unless it produces good deeds, it is dead and useless. James says, what good are we if we don't 
put into action that which we believe. And in, in other versions, we know it, faith without works is dead. He says, what good is it to tell a hungry person, have a good day? What good is it to walk past a person without any clothes and say, God bless you, but not trying to help them get any clothing? What good is it for us to walk in these faith uh, narratives and, 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 and walk as believers and run our mouths and give people these, these empty platitudes of Christian jargon, bless you, I'm praying for you, but we really don't go and pray. And, and, and we say all these other Christian cliches, but we don't demonstrate any action or power behind what we say. James says, you need to take action in your faith. That, that, that we don't need to talk about faith, but we need to demonstrate faith. And we have to demonstrate faith in our walk with God. And so not only do we need to demonstrate faith, but, but, but our, 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 our spiritual walk as a Christian believer requires us to do something. We can't sit back on our blessed assurance and wait for everybody else to do what needs to be done. Sometimes we just got to jump in the, in the race. We got to jump in the fight. We got to jump in the work and we got to put our talk to action. And, and, and so God requires us to have action in our faith. Uh, John chapter 15. John chapter 15, verses one through five. Here's the words of Jesus. I am the true grapevine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit, every branch that is not putting forth effort and work. And he prunes the branches that do bear fruit so they will produce even more. You have already been pruned and purified by the message I have given you. Remain in me and I will remain in you, for a branch cannot produce fruit if it is not severed, if, if it is severed from the vine. And you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Yes, I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit, for apart from me, you can do nothing. Our spiritual walk of action should be productive because it testifies to God's power. When we walk in faith and we demonstrate it by action, it should be productive. And when it produces, it testifies to the power of God. And I know I'm right about it because it's right there in the text. He says, if you're not continually connected to me, you can't really do anything. He says, but if you stay connected to me, I will help you produce fruit that will last. I will help you produce that which will remain because you took action. And, and, and notice what the text says. The text says for those who aren't doing anything, the branches are cut away and thrown into the fire. But even the branches that are doing something, they still get cut. They get pruned. But the pruning process is that they can produce greater fruit. And so sometimes in our spiritual walk, there are going to be some pruning seasons in our lives and that we're not going to want to get cut. We're not going to want to get trimmed back because we feel like God is doing something to us that we don't deserve. But God is saying, I'm doing this so that you could be more productive and testify to the glory of God working in your life. That you can testify to that I am the, the chief architect of your life, that I am the true uh, gardener of your life, and that 
I am moving through you that you may be productive and that you may move in action, that you may produce greater fruit. And so we're going to close out with this last particular uh, 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 verse text right here. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians 5, 22 to 23. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. And so not only does God want us to walk in trust, not only does he want us to walk in truth, but he wants us to walk in action. He wants us to move in such a way as we walk as spiritual believers of God that we will be productive for the kingdom, that we will produce fruit, fruit that will remain, that we will find ourselves on that list in Galatians 5, 22 and 23. And so that's, that's what the Lord will want me to share with you all this evening. We actually did finish early. I always say we're gonna finish early. We actually did finish early. And so, and so, so, so the takeaways for the night. Our walk with God as a Christian becomes spiritual when it exhibits trust, truth, and action. So we need to learn to walk in trust, we need to walk in truth, and we need to walk in action. And so that's what, that's all I got. <laughs> I pray that you got something from it on the night. I see Jarrell came on, you missed your favorite scripture, Jarrell, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. <laughs> that was talked about early in the lesson. And so... Since we got a little extra time, uh, if anybody want to share or add anything to the lesson, I'm sorry that my uh, the young adult class got the, the youth got kicked out of their breakout rooms. I couldn't go back out to to put you in without leaving my my screen. And so I want to thank those who are uh, tuned in tonight on Facebook. Uh, I pray that uh, the Holy Spirit says something through me that will help. Uh, your life that would challenge you uh, in your spiritual walk with God to, to kind of focus on those three areas of trust, truth, and action. So if nobody got anything they want to share or add, we're going to go ahead and close out in a word of prayer. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for your word. We thank you for the challenge of your word. We thank you, God, that you're calling us to trust you more. We thank you, God, that you're calling us to know and learn your truths. We thank you, God, that you're calling us, in, calling us in this season of physical distancing and social distancing and not meeting together as we usually would, that even in this virtual world that you're still calling us to action through faith. And so help us to exercise our faith. Help us to be productive for the kingdom. Help us not to run after those things that are not true. And help us not to waver in our trust for you. God, because we believe that you do all things well. That every good and perfect gift comes from you. And God, that you will provide everything we need. So we trust you. We love you and we bless you. We thank you for this time together. And we pray that we never will leave your presence. Keep us until we meet again. It's in Jesus' name that we pray and we say amen, amen, amen. God bless you all.
And hopefully we see you next Sunday. And uh, next Sunday we should be using our, our, our books that we've been using for the adult class or the Fawcy Clayton class. So if you have your books, go ahead and read up and we're gonna discuss the lesson. And uh, hopefully we're gonna have some of you come on and, and read some of the passages in the books and we can have a, a lively discussion like if we're in the fellowship hall in what, room 206 I think it is? Or 204? <laughs> and so God bless you. We're gonna go ahead and log off. Oh, uh, Reverend Williams, wait a minute. Yes, ma'am. Um, what book? Uh, of course, I do not have it written. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, you could, in fact, you could tell me later. All right, I'm going to pull it. Let me, I'm going to go ahead and start recording. Okay. Let me.